pick that up take this sound sound let's see why is sound okay let's see if this is working now I had it that should work now um, there can you hear that we can hear you now thank you for some reason I had to unplug the mic and plug it back in some we've had some I don't know what's going on today we've had some interesting little things going on but at least we can hear me now. You can hear me now. All right, where do I have it set for? Oh, I have it set on the virtual mic. Okay, that will work. Um, so let me go back and say everybody hi again to Linda and Angie and Julia and Roxanne. Welcome, welcome back. And uh, Larry's here and Angie there. Tamara's here. I saw... Thank you. Dang, what is she saying? <laughs> no audio. Uh, can you hear me now? There's Tamara. Lupe here is here. Nice to have you here, Lupe. You've been doing some amazing stuff, girl. Um, yay. And there we go, Angel. Yes. All right. We got my sound going on. Things good. I don't know quite what happened there. I heard a little click, click, and then it disappeared right early on so thanks for the people in the chat for heads up and letting me know and I moved my comment section right in front of me now so that I can see it all the time and yeah well I had a good day I had a good day and um, got to watch several people's different kind of things I watched um, gray oh who is that again? I forgot. Gray something artist. Anyway, he did an oil painting. It was beautiful. Just waves and just different kind of things. I was working on things, but good day. Bob's upstairs watching the first Harry Potter movie. <laughs> okay. If you, if you've not seen on YouTube, uh, the, um, Alan Cummings and, uh, Miriam Margulies, Things where Alan and Miriam get lost in Scotland. It's hilarious because she was Professor S Professor Sprout, and she's hilarious. She's this eighty-one-year-old hilarious Scottish actress, and with Alan Cummings, it's just too much fun. We were watching that Grace Grace Grayscale Anthony Grayscale. That's right. Yes, yes, he was really good. Anyway, so. Um, Tonight, though, I thought I would do one more story in the theme of the artists. And I did Kandinsky in that one book. And he was, you know, 1800s, kind of father of abstract type of thing. And then I did Herring, Keith Herring, the pop culture type of stuff. This guy is a modern day sculptor. He is probably one of the most well-known artists out of Africa and he's very well known in Africa um, and he's done some pretty amazing things. His name is El Anatsui and um, he's from Ghana so that's why the opening had the, Ghana, the colors of the Ghana flag. The book is written by Alison Goldberg and let me show you here a little bit about her uh, she's the author of picture books bottle tops illustrated by elizabeth zanon and i love you for miles and miles uh, she before becoming a children's writer she worked in economic just and justice organizations and co-wrote the resource guide creating change through family philanthropy the next generation my articles about giving, activism, and economic justice have been published in magazines and journals. I vividly remember my introductions to the editing process in the fourth grade, and I still find cutting and pasting to be thrilling. These days, I love researching everything from marine life to contemporary art for my books. 
I also blog about activism in children's literature at The Bullhorn, which is formerly called M is for Movement, and I'm a member of the Children's Society for the Children's Book Writers and Illustrations and Grub Street in Boston. So that's, I mean, that's, we've seen a lot of books that um, are done that have the um, part where they're, they're really about children's activism or showing kids how to, to be active or how people who have made a difference started out as children doing something different. And um, I just think it's really fascinating to see when when artists and illustrators really bring that to the forefront in their work. Now, the illustrator for this book is Elizabeth Zunan, and she, about me, she was born in Albany, New York, and she spent her childhood in the hot, sunny, tropical country in West Africa called the Ivory Coast, Cote de Abre, where people speak French and many other languages. My mom read my little brother and me a lot of bedtime stories in English after we came home from speaking French all day at school. As a little girl, she says, I love to draw, paint, make up dances, and play dress up. As I grew up, I didn't really change. <laughs> after returning to the United States, she attended the Rhode Island School of Design and graduated in June 2006 with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Illustration. She's now back in Albany, New York, where I draw, paint, collage, show, silkscreen, make jewelry, purses, and ponder the endless possibilities of chocolate. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, and her work is largely influenced by the people, places, and things from her childhood on the Ivory Coast as a product of two cultures. I know she is soon expect. Uh, She's coming out soon with a book that'll be written by Nikki Grimes. Nikki, I met years and years ago. God, it's probably been 30 years ago. I met Nikki when she did one of her first books and I have one of her first poetry books. Um, she's since gone on to do several books, several poetry books, as well as young adult novels and has really made a name for herself in children's literature and in children's poetry. So. That's kind of thing. So this is um, exciting to see these, uh, the, the way I've, I've seen some of these authors develop and new illustrators come in and do all kinds of wonderful things. So this uh, next, we're going to go to this book and it's called Bottle Tops, The Art of El Anatsui. And his... I have a, a website to show you of some of his things, but I think I'll wait for that until after I read the story. So let's go to this. There we go. I'm going to get this out from there. We are watching. Hi, Anth is Anthony here? Oh, nice. Oh, grayscale painting, yes. Um, yay. Okay, so this is the book. Let me get it myself out of your face here. It's in there twice. Why do you need to see me twice? You don't... <laughs> oh, I shouldn't torture you like that. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember where the most of the pictures... Oh, good. I can put myself right down here. Bottle Tops. I think I, this is a book. Okay. Remember when I was said I was in New York and I was at, uh, in Albany and I went to the Eric Carle picture book museum. This is one of the books that I brought home from there. Yeah. Bottle tops, the art of El Anatsui. By Alison Goldberg, illustrated by Elizabeth Sunan. So is the volume good for you guys? Just making sure it looks like it's, it looks good on my end. I just want to make sure that it's okay for you guys. It's being kind of, yeah, okay. There we go. Good. 
the illustrations were done. Let's see, what did she do them in? Um, the illustrations are rendered in paint and cut paper collage. bottle tops. The dirt is red and the sky is silver as El Anatsui crosses a grassy field in Nusqua, Nigeria. You'll have to forgive me right off the bat if you know the correct pronunciation of this and I goof it up. I did the best I could in looking up most of these. <laughs> Let me just focus that just a little more, bring it back down to focus. Come on. Oh, don't do, there we go, there we go. Inside the recycling market, metal roofed stalls display used car parts and empty containers. Most people come here to find specific items, such as a tire for a bike or leather for shoes, but L has a different person purpose. L looks for old things to create something new. L is an artist. El has always written his own story. He even named himself El, the youngest of 32 children. Yes, 32 children. El was born into a large family of weavers, fishermen, poets, and musicians. The town where his family lived was in a British colony called the Gold Coast. When El was very young, his mother died, and he was sent to live with an uncle in a nearby town. El wrote before he could read. Fascinated by the forms of letters, he copied the names he saw on doors. The headmaster of his school encouraged him with extra chalk. In art class, El painted with watercolor, oil, Gouache. From an early age, he began experimenting with ways to tell his stories. L was a teenager in 1957 when his country gained its independence from Britain and was renamed Ghana. With his new freedom, he felt a shift. We could decide to do things on our own terms. El went to art school. With no professional artists in his town, he did not know where this would lead. He was determined to find his own path. As a student, El learned art traditions from Europe, such as plaster casting and drawing techniques. School exposed me to what other cultures were doing in art. I was curious to know what my people did. El visited the National Culture Center, which exhibited many Ghanan art forms, drumming, dancing, wood carving, weaving, adinkra at, at cloth, a fabric stamped with pictures that share ideas, made El think about how symbols could tell stories. Now, Tamar probably knows how to pronounce that word better than I do. One image called Sankofa showed a bird reaching back. It represented drawing from the past. This idea resonated with El. He wanted to find a way to make art that could connect to the history of the people around him. In 1975, El moved to Suka, Nigeria to teach. El searched for a material for his art and chose clay. Thinking about how old things could be made into new things, he used broken pots to make new ones, mixing ground up pieces with fresh, fresh clay. The new pot acquires the strength of the old pot. It's like the memory of the old pot. El liked this idea of including the memories of old objects in his art. He saw it as a way to connect to the past. When the university's kiln broke 
and El could no longer fire pots? He looked for other ways to apply this principle. Uh, one of Ayak's aunties has 47 siblings. Oh my God, do it in the Cajun voice. <laughs> ah, the Cajun voice, that would work, the French Cajun. El collected objects, particularly ones that had passed through human hands. Milk can tin lids, old printer plates, broken cooking utensils, driftwood. He scoured the local recycling market. What other people saw as scrap, El saw as materials with a history, materials with the potential to become art. He thought about the stories those objects carried. Who made them? Who used them? Who had touched them? How could his art connect to those stories? If you touch something, you leave a charge on it, and anybody else touching it connects with you in a way. Over decades, L experimented with different materials and techniques. In wood, he made marks by gouging, sanding, drilling, and burning. L tried a chainsaw, which he found had its own language in the quick straight lines it created. He made sculptures with parts that could be rearranged. Each time L tried something new, he brought with him the experience of all the experiments he had done before. Then one day, while walking in Nisuka, El noticed something hidden in the bushes, something bright. A torn garbage bag spilled out bo bottle tops, shining silver, red, yellow, and blue. They had been twisted off many tall glass bottles. When El grabbed a handful, he found he could bend them with his fingers. What was their story? He wondered. Inside his studio, El and his students tore the bottle tops open. Though the metal was jagged, they worked with their bare hands to feel the material. El separated the bottle top into parts. In the metal that wraps around a bottle's neck, he found a band. When he flattened the bands, the bottle tops could make a variety of shapes. El punched holes through the, into the pieces with an awl and used copper wire to join them. Connecting the bottle tops in this way created a rough chain. El fashioned his invented forms again and again. He made a large patch by attaching dozens of bottle tops together using the wire-like thread. The patch was flexible and fluid. The bottle tops jangled and rattled when they moved around. Some parts had words on them. The metal shimmered. The idea eventually came to me that by stitching them together, I could get them to articulate some statement. When the process of stitching got underway, I discovered that the result resembled a real fabric cloth. The colors of the caps seemed to replicate those for traditional kente cloths. El expanded on the patch to make a new type of sculpture. He purchased used bottle tops in Nisuka and assistants helped him flatten shape and assemble the metal. As the artwork grew, he found ways to add texture and dimension. El kept these experiments in his studio for two years. They were different from his other work. The bottle tops spoke to him, but would they speak to anybody else? Hi, Fatima. At last, El folded and packed his new creations into crates, along with some other sculptures, and shipped them to a gallery in London. When El arrived, he was surprised by the interest in his bottle top sculptures. Viewers were drawn to their unusual material and size. Draped on the wall, 
Each one reached more than nine feet tall. Seeing his work displayed in the gallery and hearing the excitement about the sculptures encouraged El to find out what else he could make with bottle tops. Soon El's bottle top sculptures traveled to exhibits in New York, Dakar, Paris, and Tokyo. An enthusiastic art dealer named invited El to participate in a special exhibit during the Ven Venice Benal, one of the most famous art shows in the world. With the help of dozens of local young men who worked as his assistants, El gathered what he needed for the exhibit. It could take a whole day to make a single small patch and El wanted hundreds of patches for the large sculpture he had in mind. He scattered patches on the red tinged floor. Some pieces were wide, some thin. Some textures were twisting, some flat. The colors were glimmering and bright. El arranged and rearranged. He added new patches and took others away. He photographed each composition he worked like a painter and a sculptor at the same time, considering color, surface, light, and form. As he worked, El thought about history. Bottles like the ones these tops had sealed originally came from Europe and were brought to Africa by merchants. This reminded El of the transatlantic slave trade. When I take a bottle cap and I cut it, I just have the feeling that I am working with the material which was there at the beginning of the contact between two continents and eventually three continents. El thought about how old things could be given a new purpose. He had seen people bring scraps of fabric to the tailor to make patchwork, not for fashion, but because that was what they had. With bottle tops, he had found a material close to hand that evoked his history and environment. They had at last and could have a new meaning too. At last he stitched the patches together like a quilt. Turn this this way. In 2007, L brought his bottle tops to Venice. As he hung his 30 foot tall sculpture, he created curves to reflect the light and folds for catching shadows. He cut holes to reveal the building beneath. The sculpture wove together old art traditions and original techniques, recalling history and shaping the present. Attached and flexible, L gave it a name, Fresh and Fading Memories. Viewers stood close, admiring the small metal shapes. They stood back, astonished by the bottle top's transformation into an enormous shimmering cloth. This sculpture was unlike anything people had ever seen. L had found a new medium for making art. Linked together, bottle tops can cover buildings. They can tell stories about history and culture, stories that link people together. Today, Elle's bottle tops tell stories all over the world. When I started with the aluminum tops, I had a small feeling somewhere that it wouldn't last too long. But today, fresh ideas keep coming, and now I feel that it's something endless. El Anatsui and his artwork. I'm going to pull that up closer if I can for you guys. Um, there. Let's see if I can get that closer for you. So this one, you can see that. That's the one, Fresh and Fading Memories, that hung in Venice in 2007. Oh my gosh, 30 feet tall.
And these are some of the, this is a small section right here. Let me move this here. Um, my close let me move this move the camera down if you can if I can so you can see a little better there so that's that this small section from this one it's a picture of him in 2012 um, the author's note says she spent a college semester in Ghana and stayed in Accra near a contemporary art gallery. On the second floor, an unusual sculpture was mounted on the wall, made from wood and paint, marked and burned, and it seemed woven with many old ideas, old and new. Ancient Cloth series was my introduction to El's work, and I have sought opportunities to see his work art ever since. Um, while El's art was recognized before 2007, the show in Venice was a turning point in his career. In addition to the installation of Fresh and Fading Memories, he exhibited two other sculptures at the Benal, Dusasa du I and Dusasa II, that were widely acclaimed. Today, El's art is shown inside museums and on the outside of buildings all over the world. Each time the bottle top sculptures are displayed, they are arranged and draped differently. Oh, I'm glad she's talking about that. I was going to. Some of the El's sculptures have names in Iu, El's first language, like gli, which means wall, story, or disrupt, depending on how it's spoken. Some of the names refer to African history. El finds meaning in the bottle's origins. Objects such as these were introduced to Africa by Europeans when they came as traders. Alcohol was one of the commodities brought with them. Let me switch something here. Ba -da -ba -da. Go there, there. Alcohol was one of the commodities that was brought with them to exchange for goods in Africa. Eventually, alcohol became one of the items used in transatlantic slave trade. I thought that the bottle caps had a strong reference to the history of Africa. L encourages people to view his art and see what it says to them, what it makes them feel. When I look at Elle's art, I am reminded that art does not require fancy tools or new materials. The things around us can be the raw materials for telling our stories. And when we're true to ourselves, when we create, the art we make can be powerful and unique. I found researching this guy just totally fascinating. Um, he, when she mentioned that every time his work is shown, it's draped differently and appears differently. And he encourages that. He, I want, I, uh, let's see if I can get to, where is my, I need my scenes window. Scenes, there it is. Okay. Um, go back here to screen share and, um, I pulled up here. This is his, his website page um, has a lot of different of his work that he has going on in different places. Like here, look at this one. In 2019, second wave, all these pieces hung here. Black and gold. These are, this is as far back as 1974, 1979. When I create work, it is, in my view, a metaphor reflecting an alternative response to examine possibilities and extend the boundaries in art. My work can represent links in the evolving narrative of memory and identity. Um, it, there is a, if you look his name up on um, YouTube or on just look up research about him, I found a documentary that was done and childhood friend talked to about with him and things. And he showed how he was having these installations that he would send these things to different galleries and he wouldn't show up until they had already kind of draped and installed it. And he, it was how he thought that they wanted to show it and it fit with their city or with that gallery. I thought it was just fascinating. Um, artworks here, I'm in artworks, exhibitions, 
uh, I think the last uh, search about and he's one of the most highly acclaimed artists in Africa's history and foremost contemporary artists in the world that's he's been uh, claimed that it's just I just found look at this like this one right here confluence how it's draped it's hard to show but I they're just look at that look at that how how those pieces are pulled together I'm just fascinated by it anyway that's what I I I ask people I ask people speak mostly Dinka and some Arabic. Yeah. So much work in this. I know. I did. So Tamar says she's trying to put together pieces from a concept development subject from when she was studying in visual arts. Oh, that sounds fascinating. So how far along are you? And what, I mean, take snapshots, show us, send them in for, for Sunday. For the show and tell time on Sunday's show. Um, Sunday show and tell. That's what we're going to do. Sunday show and tell. Officially now. Sunday stories are story time and show and tell. Sundays. I just declared. Um, dream travel. I was kept typing. <laughs> Moving. Yes. So, I'm, well, I'm glad you guys like it. Um, it, this, like I said, this was a book that when I was at the Children's Book Museum, it was one of their, their featured among different artists. And I was like, oh, I have to get this. And then when I started studying him and, and doing a little bit of research about him, it was just fascinating. Um, it is amazing. Another language no clue which um visual tamara is so yeah concept development so so i don't know she'll have to maybe she'll when she sends in her picture she'll tell us what her idea of concept development is when she was studying development for for me concept development for me when i as a photographer it's like the the photos that i'm doing for my uh, um, finding Monet and Moab. So the concept was taking a look at the kind of uh, visual um, feedback you get when you look at a picture from that's done by Monet and emulating that with the photographs and finding that same kind of thing in nature that I found in Moab. And so that was some of those. That's still indefinite concept development. Plus half of those pictures are in that catalog that won't open yet. Yay. I'm getting there. Of course, I've just been ignoring it. Quite frankly, I've just been ignoring it. So um, anyway, that's the story for tonight, you guys. Thank you for coming. It's I know it's a shorter time tonight, but I just wanted to read one story. This one, he's just got so much to him and uh, give you a chance to, if you wanted to uh, look him up, L and not sweet, sweet. Yeah, and that's sweet. I did listen to an oops, E-L. What was it? His, his, oh, A-N-A-T-S-U-I, got it. So there's his name. Um, I just need some rest from the screens, hugs and smooches. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, yes, showing art on Sunday. I think so. I think that that will work better. Uh, I'll just throw show art on Sunday, Larry, um, unless I say something different. But getting through some other stuff and sorting things out, I think I'll do Sunday. Anyway, you guys. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed this story tonight and um, have it gave you some inspiration.
for some of your own work. I know you guys are all so talented and you do such amazing art. It's amazing to see how he, you know, the odds and ends art that he found and put together and had made up of just so many different little things and um, just it all kind of came together and then how it changes each time it's shown by who based on whoever is displaying it or showing it or decides how it should be I think that that's pretty cool that's pretty amazing it's kind of a lot like some fluid art that can be hung in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we'll see it Sunday. Yes. Um, yeah. So Sunday, we're going to see it. All right, you guys. Thanks a lot for being here. I really appreciate it. And it, um, yeah, it made you, it makes my day. It makes my day. I look really forward to this. And so I think I'm going to do Thursday and Sunday from here on out. I was trying thinking about Wednesday, but Wednesday seems to be a day that I I have to move it from a lot. There's things going on for somehow middle of the week Wednesday. I know that we're going to Phoenix in February and we fly out on a Wednesday and we fly back on a next Wednesday. And I was like, oh, that just wouldn't work. So I think if I do Thursdays, it'll be better Thursday and Sunday. So we'll do show and tell and story time on Sundays. And then Thursday, we'll have stories and maybe something else. Who knows? Until next time, though, thanks for being here. And keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. You know it's all around you. But the first place you'll find it is if you go look in the mirror. And I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Oh, does, oh before I go, does anybody else have lives coming up or shows coming up um like tomorrow i know lupe does one every morning Lu lupe posts a, a new video almost every morning uh i know i, I am a bit distracted <laughs> i am a bit distracted i have a, a few. sarah is doing fine you guys have been asking my sister she she is it but it's very difficult on her it's she's on day 11 uh with 17 to go of the daily radiation and it's it's rough um so that's a little bit distracting for us and um i'm a little worried about her but you know it's coming along and <laughs> so just send her good vibes energy and my other sister patty is having topical chemo it's very frustrating to have my sisters be <clears throat> struggling not not liking that at all um all right larry has his sunday have live at their regular time um oh my gosh we got i forgot man and got those and yeah all right so i'll see you next time you guys take care in the heat of the night, we could get lost in all the lies and sounds. Feel all right, we will go. Yes, you will. We will just stay here downtown. There's not just stars on the boulevard. There in the light in your eyes. Oh, we don't need no black cards. I just need you by my side. We could be shameless, famous, running cool with a love that leaves us way. Thanks, Larry. Just stars on the
love it, Tamara. <laughs> 